Well, hello everyone! Welcome back to Spirit of Justice. Previously, the trial continued and Sarge Buff took the stand. Well, and by take the stand, I mean I guess he piloted his remote-controlled drone and is hovering at it. He's in the, uh, in a chamber nearby because he's so shy, but nevertheless, he's transmitting his own testimony over the drone's microphone. Or speaker, I suppose would be more fair to say. At any rate, he was very dodgy about what he said he saw. In fact, he tried to say he saw nothing, but we were able to point out that that's a bit absurd considering he had his drone and could look anywhere in the house he wanted, even if he wanted to stay in his room. And to that end, Athena is deploying um, Widget to psychoanalyze him and perform some therapy. So let's see what happens, shall we? Also, one more thing before we begin. Just one more thing. I'm now on Blue Sky. A link to my profile can be found in the description of this video, as well as the main page of my YouTube channel. Uh, I guess follow me there if you want, like, updates on this YouTube channel. Like, uh, alerts if I need to take a break from uploading for some reason. As well as my thoughts and opinions on the gaming industry and new game releases, and maybe highlighting a few Steam sales of games I really like. Also, photos of my cat, if you're into that sort of thing. Like, every, everyone else loves loves cat videos, so I hope that's a hit. Anywho, now then, actually, on with the show. Your Honor, I believe I can be of help here. Time for a therapy session, is it, Miss Sykes? Yes, it will help the witness with his anxiety, maybe even enough to testify. Then, by all means, please bring the poor child out into the light of day. Oh, but I assume this will be all right with you, Mr. Wright. Why not? It's not like we all haven't been through this before. What are you butting in for, lady? There ain't a place on this battlefield for you. Objection! I beg to differ, Sarge. This G.I. Jane's always ready to fight for the courtroom. For a fight in the courtroom, rather. And wait until you see what I've got in my arsenal. Analytical psychology. With it, I'm going to blow a big ol' hole in the armor you've built around your heart. ooh -ah! First evidence, now analytical psychology. Where are these WMDs coming from? Well, if it's a battle you want, bring it on. You may have started this war, but I'm going to end it. Corpse woman's, uh, core woman Sykes. You got it, Sarge. Time to seek out the agony buried deep in your heart. Brace yourself. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I have come to like these sections quite a lot. I stayed in my room with my drone that evening. Sure, you felt a bit of distress. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna sympathize quite a lot. I'm a recluse myself. Whenever guests are over, I prefer to stay in my room too. So I get it. I heard Dat and Papa arguing with each other. Distressed and surprised. Not angry. Dat's got kicked out, but I saw him still hanging around outside. Sure, that... That would be very alarming and surprising, sure. I was in my room, so I didn't know Papa was dead until the next day. Um, uh-oh. Alright, everything seems to be in order. Maybe, wait, um... Sure. Okay, you know what? If you saw him still hanging around outside, why wouldn't you go to your father and tell him so? That makes no sense. Plus, there's like a, a lesser amount of surprise to like discover the body. Maybe it's this one. It's not like there's any penalty for guessing wrong here. Got it. Aha! 
That's strange. You reacted with shock when you discovered your father's body. Yet you weren't nearly as shocked then as you as when you saw Mr. Arable. Normally you'd expect the death of one's father to be much more impactful. Enemy fire! Direct hit! That is strange. Wonder what it could mean. Well, we know he wasn't as affected by his father's death as he should have been. And I think I know why. Oh? Sarge, you weren't as shocked at seeing your father's body as seeing Mr. Arable because... You'd already seen his body. Yeah, this is the only one that makes sense here. Sarge, maybe the truth is you left your room that night. And that's when you saw it, your father's body. I saw no such thing! Really? You didn't see his body? Alright then, what did you see? Uh. Look, Apollo, we've lost some noise. So, just as I suspected, you really did see something. Sarge, please, tell us what you saw. Uh, but, but... I... The moment I saw it, oh, I... I couldn't bear it. I couldn't stand to lose yet another loved one. Huh? Am I missing something here? Is that why you weren't very shocked when you found out your father was dead? Because you had already sensed that he was a gunner somehow? M maybe Please, Sarge, what was it you saw on the night of your father's murder? Oh... <laughs> Gaga? Is that supposed to be a laugh? But... That makes no sense for him to laugh right now. What is that? I... I saw... Uh... Gah... Ah! Wow! What's happening? I don't like where this is going. Yeah! No more! No more, please! Ah! Help! Widget! Uh. Wow! Wow, I did not expect that! <laughs> I've confiscated your little toy! The battlefield has no place for unauthorized equipment! Widget! Paulo, I can't continue this session without him! C calm yourself this instant, witness. I hereby order you to submit to your therapy session. What in blazes? <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Look at me. I'm judge, jury, and executioner now. I hereby convene a military tribunal. Whoa, whoa, this has gone way too far. The bailiff, arrest that drone this instant. Rawr! Stop resisting. Ah! If you don't come quietly, I'll fire! Ah! Give it through it right back. <laughs> right there. Ah! Okay, if the if the courtroom looks nothing short of like it did in Dual Destinies after that bomb went off, I will be disappointed. I'm disappointed. Oh, finally got him back. Nice work. Hmm, this witness is truly a handful. Oh, hop, two, three, four. Whoa! Miss Sykes, what's the witness's current psycho psychological state? Let's see, he's emotionally all over the map. 
So his out of control emotions are in control of him, huh? Does that mean we can calm him down if we can figure out the root cause? Yes, so let's see what we can find. Sarge, can you hear me? Oh, is that you, Cor Corwoman Sykes? I'm here. Now, I want you to take a few deep breaths. Just try to relax. Try it with me. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. In, out, in, out. And, and now, let your emotions take you where they will. Go on, just let it all out. All forces attack! That's the least relaxing breathing exercise I've ever seen. Dats was still hanging around after he got kicked out when... I heard more fighting and I got worried about Papa. Oh, well that changes the story completely now, doesn't it? Dats was outside, yet arguing was heard from the, uh, uh, lounge. Right? Is that the word lounge? I don't think so. What was the word? The study, yeah. Got worried about Papa. So I left my room, but suddenly I got dizzy and passed out. I remember a flame lighting up the room and Papa grinning with delight. That's when he must have been killed, if only I hadn't passed out. Whoa. So he has two out-of-control emotions, huh? And all we have to do is find out what's causing them to run wild like this. Yes, whatever the cause, it should appear somewhere in the mood matrix. Let me know if you think you found it. Ugh, easier said than done. Don't suppose you have any ideas on where to start? Well, I would think about Sarge's personality and his past. Those are the things that shape a person's emotions. You should be able to find something to work with from there. Well, if there's one thing that's very odd... What is the weapon? What's going on here? Got it. That doesn't seem to be the cause of his current emotional state. Huh. Yeah, I guess it would be the... the killing. Yeah, I guess... Uh, I guess we'll go with this. Also, did I know about that necklace? That shiny blue... token on, on the necklace seems pretty significant to me. Okay, maybe it's the fire? What, what would this be? Got it. That's it! Sarge, you were overcome with shock and fear when you saw those flames, weren't you? Was I? Yes, just six months ago. You and your mother were caught up in an arsonist blaze. Oh, that's right. I knew his mother was dead, but I, for I completely forgot how... Okay. Well, that's my fault. So it's no wonder you would be extremely scared of fire. Yes, that does make sense. And maybe, just maybe, your subconscious fear of fire was what caused you to withdraw from the world. What do you mean, corpse woman, uh, core woman Sykes? I'm sorry, I I know the word core, but for some reason, core woman is throwing me off. In the outside world, you are bound to come across all sorts of fire. Candles, cigarettes, heck, even the grill at a diner. 
Even if it's not that often, just the idea that you might see them grew bigger and bigger until you couldn't shut it out. I... I think you might be onto something. Candles. Cigarettes. Just thinking about them sends a chill down my spine. Wow, the things I take for granted. Now I see. I was afraid. Afraid of the fire. Strange, I didn't even realize it myself. About that fire, Sarge. Can you tell me what, what it was burning? Just stay calm and maybe something will come to you. Oh, um... Oh! I'm starting to remember. It was... It was that relic! That relic Papa was studying! It was on fire! The orb was on fire? Huh. Could he have... Could Dr. Buff has have cracked the code? And solved the secrets of the orb? Hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, it's still kind of fuzzy. But yes, the orb was burning right in front of Papa. And there, in the flames, was... Mama? Yes, now I remember. I saw Mama appear in the, amid the dancing flames. My God, did... <laughs> did this little boy see the face of the... the the Holy Mother? Hmm. All right. Wait, what? What's going on here? Maybe it's the memory from the fire that killed his mother. Huh. He might be confusing it with what really happened when his father died. So, let me guess. More therapy? Yep. But this time, it seems there's an inconsistency in his statements. And I think we should be able to prove it with the evidence, evidence at hand. I hope this inconsistency is the key. To proving that the relic really is the Founder's Orb. Dats was still hanging around after he got kicked out when I heard more fighting and I got worried about Papa. So I left my room, but suddenly I got dizzy and passed out. I remember a flame lighting up the room and Papa grinning with delight. The relic was on fire and I saw Mama's face inside. That's when Papa must have been killed. If only I hadn't passed out. I believe Sarge's fear of fire is triggering a past memory. As a result, the memory of what he really saw is being suppressed. When he tries to remember, the past memory is being overlaid onto the more recent one. Wow, mine sure is a tricky beast. So I'll just have to find an inconsistency. Right, once you find an inconsistent statement, present the evidence that proves it. The main issue here is when the doctor was murdered. Was he really killed while Dat was there? Right. All right. Yeah, I think the answer is staring me in the face already. The, the Founder's Orb should have been in the mountains at that time. How could he have been holding it? Objection! 
Don't blame yourself, Sarge. After all, even if you hadn't passed out, the outcome would have been the same. What do you mean? I'm talking about the time of death. Your father wasn't killed right after you left your room. W what? Explain yourself at once, Private Justice! You said you saw your father burning the orb, right? But that night he went out to hide it in a cave. So what you saw, Sarge, was something that happened before your father left to hide the orb. Oh! So you see, you didn't pass out right before he was killed. You passed out right before he left for the cave to hide the orb in the ruins within. So, so even if I hadn't passed out... That's right. The outcome would have been exactly the same. That's because your father, Dr. Buff, was killed after he returned from the ruins. And therefore, Sarge, there is no need for you to blame yourself. Oh, I see. Private Justice! Can... Can you really say I bear no blame in this? Why do you ask? Because... The truth is... If I hadn't engaged in my siege defense, Papa would still be alive. Sarge... Papa wished nothing more than for me to lead a happy, healthy life. That's why he quit his job and moved us out, away from the big city. But even then, I didn't have the courage to set foot into the outside world. And in the end... I failed to make Papa's wish come true. Um, Sarge? If you want to make your father's wish come true, if that's what you really want, then who's to say it's too late? Why don't you take the first step now? My first step? That's right. You can cast off all your regret. You can stop standing still and start moving forward. You have the power within you. I know from experience. I know what it's like to feel like you do. But only you, only you can decide to take that first step. If you don't change your tactics now, Sarge, the victory you seek in the war you're waging will always lie beyond your grasp. Hmm. I think I understand now. I've... I've made up my mind. As of this moment... I will suspend my siege defense indefinitely! Wait a goddamn second! Is that a so huh? <laughs> well, how about that? Huh? Yeah. Okay. All jokes aside about how I mentally uh, imagined uh, Sarge Buff, I'm really proud of this kid, and I'm happy to meet them. Sergeant Buff reporting for duty. What? I I thought you were a guy. You're definitely not the gruff drill sergeant I envisioned. In this moment, I feel validated. <laughs> well, my mama was in the Russian army. 
I was just as shocked, but it certainly explained a few things when I found out, too. May I introduce you to Miss Ar- Army Buff? <laughs> what? Okay, so- so was Sarge just a persona? I guess it was. May I introduce you to Miss Army Buff? H12. <laughs> no way. Careful, soldier. Don't forget I could blow you away at a moment's notice. She- she's just too cute. So, have you always been in a wheelchair, Sarge? Negative. Only since I was injured. In the fire. Um, your voice sounds awfully different from before. <gasps> I feel so seen! My head cannons! Everything's right! <laughs> my drone features a voice modulation device. It's just one of my army's many technological marvels. Well, you fooled me. I thought some 20-something military fanatic was at the controls. If it's all the same to you, troops, I'd like to continue my testimony. I've just remembered something, and it's as crisp and clear as a trumpet at roll call. What did you remember? It wasn't my mother who appeared in the burning orb. It was some lady Papa had shown me a picture of a long time ago. Okay, probably not the Holy Mother. He said it was... The Holy Mother. I feel like a yo-yo. I now know what a yo-yo feels like. Up and down and up and down. Wow. All right. <laughs> oh. Uh. Okay, reel it back in. He said it was the Holy Mother. The f <laughs> I can't I, That was so fast. <laughs> uh, just prove it wrong. Okay. He said it was the Holy Mother, the founder of Koreanism. She appeared right there, right in the burning orb. You know, I'm really glad that um, the Yuda's not here. Otherwise, he may combust. That'd be very traumatic for everyone involved. Huh? What did you just say? The Holy Mother of Kuriinism was in the Burning Orb? What does that even mean? I have a bad feeling about this. Could it be? Could this explain what Sarge means by the Holy Mother appearing in the Burning Orb? Um... The email. I deciphered the patterns but have yet to crack the riddle. The orb held a secret. I think it's this. Take that! What's that? A piece of related evidence. Wouldn't you agree? Although, to be honest, I'd have to plead the fifth if you asked me how certain I was. I was pretty certain. Private! Did you really think such a cockamamie plan would rout the enemy? Yikes! I better be more careful. If the orb was burning, maybe the evidence you're looking for has to do with fire. Yeah, I know. Uh huh. Burning. Burning. Burning?
<laughs> ah. Offer thy prayers as fervent as fire, only then shall the Holy Mother return. Take that! Dr. Buff's research notes? What do they have to do with this? Look at this. The burning orb, the appearance of the founder. This part points to both. Boop. Take that! There's a legend about the orb involving a mysterious riddle. And this song, in turn, is said to contain the key to solving it. If the legend is true, then I believe the answer lies in this part of the song. Offer thy prayers as fervent as fire, only then shall the Holy Mother return. Well, anyone see where I'm going with this? Prayers as fervent as fire? Ah! You're supposed to... Set the orb on fire. The whole stanza seems to suggest that the founder will appear in the orb if the orb is set on fire. Wait, so the doctor, he... Yes, Athena, he had solved the ancient riddle of the founder's orb. Oh my! <laughs> I like that her helmet has a helipad symbol on it. That's cute. Papa was a great archaeologist, so I believe in him, and I want to believe... I want to believe he achieved his long-time dream of solving that riddle before he died. Well, we won't know for sure until we try it for ourselves. Yes, do it, Private Justice, please. I want to see what Papa was searching for with my own eyes. Objection! The, uh... The plaintiff must object to this. Objection! The plaintiff will stand down and be quiet. Objection! You don't have the right to set a precious relic like that on fire. Objection! Oh, but I do. All I needed was Sarge's permission. Since we still don't know if this treasure is the Founder's Orb or the Crystal of Amy Fay, any ownership rights the doctor had now belong to his daughter. Therefore, you have absolutely no right to stop us. Very well, Mr. Justice. I never thought I'd be saying this, but you may burn the evidence. All right, here we go. Why does he have that? Does he smoke? Look! Apollo! The inside of the orb! It's melting! There's something in there. Whoa. Dirk! Isn't she... Her garb leaves no room for doubt. It's the Founder herself. Face and all. I don't understand. The greatest of taboos in Koreanism is the depiction of the Founder's face. Yet here it is, hidden within this orb. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but as you can see, the issue is crystal clear. This figure is the Holy Mother, founder of Koreanism. And based on that, this must be none other than the Founder's Orb. Objection! Oh, what he got for us now. B be that as it may, Mr. Arable still may have killed the Doctor. If so, it would render the Orb Transfer Agreement null and void. Don't play dumb, Mr. Wright. The truth of the matter has already been proven. Dr. Buff wasn't killed right after Sarge saw Mr. Arable. It happened after the doctor came back from hiding the orb. And you've no proof that Mr. Arable was still around at the time. Urgh. Your claim that the Defiant Dragons were behind the crime doesn't hold water. And that means the Orb Transfer Agreement is still perfectly valid. Arrgh. I hate to do this to him. 
Admit it, Mr. Wright. I just burned your whole case to the ground. No. Oh. No! I won? I actually won? Uh, Mr. Wright, would you care to respond? Respond? Uh... I didn't think so. Wait, did we just win? Did we actually beat the Turnabout Terror? You're amazing, Apollo! D don't just stand there, Wright. Do something. Uh... Well... I don't think there's any digging out of this hole. Mr. Adish and Wimberson, I think it's time for your concession speech. I have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the Founder's Orb. The facts don't lie, but you obviously do. How's that for a campaign slogan? Why, you contemptuous peasant! Hmm... I think this is a good time to wrap up this trial. If both parties have no further objections, I will render my verdict. No objections here, Your Honor. Uh, um, no obje- <laughs> Speaking of digging holes... You can't do this, the crystal is mine. I'll lose the election if I lose that crystal. I'm sorry, but there's really nothing more I can do. You haven't forgotten about our little chat, have you? What's going on here? Objection! Your Honor, I... I object to the defense's last claim. What? I don't believe they have truly proven that the relic is indeed the Founder's Orb. Objection! Mr. Wright, I don't think even you could bluff your way out of this one. What possible argument could you have to claim that this isn't the Founder's Orb? <sighs> Alright, so setting aside this issue of... Um, Wimperson apparently having some kind of blackmail going on on Phoenix, which is frightening. I think I know exactly where this is going. Phoenix is about to posit that the Founder's name could very well be, well, Amy Faye. The worst part about that is that it's actually plausible. I don't think- I think there's a non-zero chance that could be true. Uh, about that. Oh, of course. He can't possibly have hit on something. The defense's assertion is incomplete. And this is why. Their claim that this relic is the Founder's Orb is based on a legend. And that legend claims that the Founder will return when the riddle is solved at last. Right, and that's what happened. The Founder was revealed for all to see. But, Mr. Justice, what about the rest of the legend? Huh? According to the legend, once the Founder returned... She would bestow spiritual power onto the person who solved the riddle. You're kidding, right? Well, Mr. Justice, do you feel great spiritual power coursing through your veins? Uh... No? But, but receiving spiritual powers and stuff... It's all just mystic mumbo-jumbo, right? Maybe so, but you're the one basing your claim on said legend. And what we saw here does not fully fulfill it, does it? No, but... Consequently, you cannot rightfully claim that this is the Founder's Orb. <laughs> I mean... 
fall asleep. What's caught into him? Why is Mr. Wright doing this? Hmm, it would appear that Mr. Wright has lost a few of his marbles. That couldn't be further from the truth, Your Honor. In any case, I believe this is a good time for a recess. Both sides will have 20 minutes to prepare. I ask that all arguments be ready by then. Oh, and Mr. Wright, you do well to wash up and find your missing marbles by then, too. <laughs> huh. Well, I actually thought we might actually be at the end. Apparently not. Maybe this is the two-thirds mark of the trial section? Huh. Mr. Wright sh is sure acting funny. I mean, he's famous for going out on a limb, but that last assertion was just plain crazy. It's either a bluff or a Hail Mary. Either way, it doesn't make much sense. Maybe there's something we're missing here. Although, he seemed perfectly normal when we spoke earlier. Apollo, I have a bad feeling about this. I'm going to go check up on him. What's going on with you, Mr. Wright? Hey, Private Justice? Oh, Sarge. I forgot to mention something. On the night of Papa's murder, a strange thing happened. Oh, but why are you only telling me about it now? Well, I didn't say anything before because I thought Papa's death was an accident. But now that we know otherwise, I figured it might be important. There's still more to this case. When I left my room and lost consciousness, I passed out right here. <sighs> yeah, okay, so... Yeah, the diagram definitely did not show the elevator down there at the bottom before. Does it even reflect here? No, it does not. Clever, clever. Oh, whoops. When I left my room and lost consciousness, I passed out right here. That's right above the coffee bar. Uh-huh. But when I came to, someone was pushing my wheelchair. What? I was so scared I beat a hasty retreat as fast as my wheels could take me. Do you know who it was? No, it was pitch black. Plus, I fled to my room so fast I didn't even have a chance to turn on the lights. Maybe it was your father. No, he would have said something to me. Besides, I'd have known if it was him. So then, it could have been... your father's real killer. My thoughts exactly. But you didn't report this to, pol to the police. It didn't even occur to me. It's okay. You were obviously still upset, so don't beat yourself up over it. Apollo, this could be really important information. I think the act of pushing Sarge's wheelchair could be part of some bigger scheme. It's hard to see why else the killer would have done such a thing. Also, could we get a fingerprint analysis on the handles of the wheelchair? That'd be nice. Where's Emma? Guess I should take her statement down as evidence. Oh, welcome back, Athena. Huh? What's with the long face? How'd it go with Mr. Wright? What should I... Athena? Oh, sorry. Zoned out there for a sec. The recess is almost over, so let's go! <laughs> what was that all about? Yeah, clearly she learned about the blackmail, whatever it is. I swear to God, if Paul is, like, threatening Trucy or something, I'm gonna scream. Huh. Alright.
right, court is, once again, back in session. Now, um, Mr. Wright, about that last objection you raised. We, the plaintiffs, still believe that the defense has yet to sufficiently prove, it, prove its case. They claim that, according to legend, the Founder's Orb would bestow spiritual power. Yet the relic in question has failed to do so. Therefore, it has failed its own test. Uh, I see. You know, you realize if this proceeds and Phoenix's side wins, it realizes that the courts of Japanifornia will officially recognize that the Holy Mother, the, revenant go the reverend goddess of the nation of Kurein, is in fact not real. That's what this is leading to if they win. <laughs> is this going to become an international incident? I feel like this is going to become an international incident. He's sticking with that ridiculous argument? Furthermore, even if it is the Founder's Orb, it can't be awarded to the Defiant Dragons. After all, they were the ones who killed Dr. Buff. Objection! What are you talking about? That was already proven to be false. There are no grounds for asserting that the Defiant Dragons murdered the Doctor. Oh, but I'm afraid there are, Mr. Justice. Your Honor, I would like to present new testimony to this court. Testimony that will show that Dat Erebel did, in fact, kill Dr. Buff. What? Very well, you may call your witness. I guess Mr. Wright found another new angle. What new testimony could there be this late in the game? Fellow citizens, it is I, Paul Addison, the once and future representative of the, of the people. Jeez, not him again. My client divulged new information to me during the recess. He remembered something he saw, you see. Something crucial to this case. I think you mean he made up something that makes him look good. How very convenient. It was around 11 at night, and I was out on a mobile meet-and-greet around the village. That's when I saw Dr. Buff being murdered from outside his study window. Mr. Arable snuck up from behind and struck him on the head. His weapon of choice, a suitcase. A big, strong man like him could easily swing a heavy suitcase onto someone's head. Really? You saw the murder as it happened? And you're just telling us now because... <laughs> I saved the best for last. It's a tactic known to all the political greats. The murder weapon was a complete mystery. But my client's eyewitness account has finally brought it into light. According to the autopsy report, Dr. Buff was struck in the head by the corner of some object. I suppose that could very well be the corner of a suitcase. Objection! But eyewitness testimony isn't the same as hard evidence. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. What's that supposed to mean? We have physical evidence too. A luminol test revealed... Doctor's blood on Mr. Arable's suitcase. All right. Really? But how does that prove Mr. Arable used it as a weapon? Objection! You should know the answer to that, Mr. Justice. Since you know as well as I that the suitcase is covered in his fingerprints. Ah! I forgot we dusted it right in front of Emma. The turnabout tower strikes again. Mm, this is quite convincing testimony and evidence. Nevertheless, you may proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Justice.
Uh, well, the first thing I want to say is that he says that um, Archie Buff was bludgeoned by the suitcase, but doesn't the autopsy say it was like the corner? Yeah, the corner of some object. But the suitcase... Uh, why do we not have the suitcase as evidence? Oh, unless... No. I was gonna say that the... The suitcase doesn't really have corners, per se. It's... It has very rounded edges. But I'm not, a, I'm not entirely sure if we can point that out. I guess I'll just have to... Think things through a bit more, shall we? Uh... Yeah, I think there's a very pointed reason that the statue has black hair. Look, we already know that the, uh, the Curry-Een royal family is an offshoot, well, uh, no, I guess it might be more fair to say that the Fey family is an offshoot of the Curry-Eens. Um... What I'm saying is, I, I think there's a serious shot that this could be Schrodinger, Schre, Schro, Schro, uh, Schrodinger's evidence. I think it is simultaneously the Holy Mother and Amy Fay. How about that? Then again, does that really match up with the timeline? You know, I pr I'm probably forgetting a lot of key things about Amy Faye's exploits. She was brought up so much, but I didn't really pay attention to the the time she was kicking around in relation to the nation of Kurin. And after all, I think it was said that yeah, after all, the urn, the urn that Pearl broke in the second Ace Attorney game, housing her soul. It would be very inventive to retcon it and make it so that she was all along the founder of another nation. But didn't... <sighs> Wouldn't she have died in Karain Village? I mean, I, I guess she could have left, but... I would say, though, from a storytelling perspective, it would be incredible if the Holy Mother was, in fact, a Fae. It would just shake so many things up. It would give so much fuel for, in terms of writing, for Maya and Rafa. Come to think of it, have, have Rafa and Maya had actual conversation outside of jabs and in court? back when Maya was accused of murder? I'm not sure if they did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the more I think about this theory, the more I hope it's true, but I don't think I have anything going for it just yet. Hmm. So, I wonder... What? Just what was the material inside this glass ball that turn translucent in the heat. Was it... was it wax? I know wax is very easy to liquefy, but... Is liquid wax transparent? I, I mean... You know, I think it is. I remember whenever I look at candles that are burning, then like the pool of wax that's floating just below the flame. Yeah, that, that's kind of transparent, isn't it? I think it was wax. Not that that's even a question that needs asking or answering for this game, game's plot, but inquiring minds gotta know. Hmm. Well...
Uh, I suppose at the end of the day, I look forward to Adishin digging his own grave. So we can kick him in it. This guy, seriously. He's gonna end up proving himself the killer at this rate. It's like, it's gotta be him. And dare I say it, we might just finish this trial section next time, and from there, it's doubtlessly back to Kurein after big things happen. Like, cripes, if Inga and Garan learn about what just happened with this Founder's Orb in this courtroom, uh, there's gonna be hell to pay. And uh, before we end, just a little reminder, yes, again, I have made a Blue Sky account under the name Zephyr the Jester, link in the description and the description of my YouTube channel. Check it out for just random thoughts on gaming and in general, cat photos, stuff about my YouTube channel, maybe little talks about what's gonna come next in my channel in terms of series we do, and plus I just love to have conversations, you know? Just ask me questions or anything. I'll, I'll check check in on it then and then and now. You know, I won't advertise my my blue sky too much more. Maybe just at like ends of series or what have you. At any rate, I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more of the uh, Spirit of Justice. I got the name Spirit of Justice. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care.